This is going to be your guide to breeding in Pal World. Breeding unlocks at level 19 when you unlock the breeding farm through technology points. After that, all you need is cake, a male and a female pal, and boom, you get eggs. But there's a lot more to that, and that's what this video is about, because breeding is one of the most important things in the game. So if you enjoy the video, or if it helps out in any way, don't forget to leave a like, share it with your friends, and comment your thoughts down below. So I did a guide on getting cake, but the quick rundown is you need a bee guard, you need a chickpea, and you need a mazarina. That way you can get most of the ingredients for cake. Then you're also going to need a farm, which can be achieved by having a watering pal, a planting pal, and a gathering pal. Lilene is broken for farming because it has four planting, and then with Jormantide's four watering, a lot of people are just running a Jormantide and a Lilene. You can also put in another helper pal that has like transport or gathering, and then you will need a pal with high kindling because cakes take a really long time to bake. Um, I had this Vanworm Crist in here because like, oh, chilling is going to be helpful. It's only helpful for the ingredients if you're trying to make them last longer while making cake. But when you put a cake into a breeding farm, it stops rotting. The timer just doesn't go down anymore. Then to bake a cake, you're going to need a cooking pot. And as you can see, it's a 2000 workload per cake. And it just gets crazier from there. So if you don't have Jormantide Ignis, then you're probably going to want multiple cooking stations. And even if you do have them, maybe you still want multiple to kind of split up the workload and keep the cake production going. You're also going to need a mill. That way you can get flour, which is going to be really good with your watering pal in between farming cycles. So that's a quick rundown of the breeding base. If you want more details, I did a guide on how to make cake. You can check that out. Also, I did a video talking about getting an early Jormantide Ignis because you can actually get the best kindling pal before you even unlock the breeding farm. And that's going to be through finding eggs. So you go to Mount Obsidian, you fly around, you explore around until you find a huge dragon egg. And that's going to give you the Jormantide Ignis. But also there's a lot of other crazy egg locations, especially in the higher level areas to where you can explore them early with pelt armor. So the weather doesn't affect you too much. And if you get large and huge eggs, you can actually unlock deeper breeding chain pals. And that's where this video starts to get pretty crazy because now you get to meet your new friend, Mr. Spreadsheet. You can find a link to the Reddit post with the spreadsheet in the description down below. Don't forget to like and comment when you head down there. And the way that breeding works is that each pal has a breeding power and it's going to take the average of those breeding powers and then give you the child pal inside of an egg. Now, generally, it's based off of the rarity or power of the pal, but there are some exceptions where like, oh, you get Relaxorus, and it's actually one of the best pals for power. So even though Relaxorus is early to mid game, it has one of the best breeding powers, which means a pal that has a higher number is going to be achievable through breeding with some exceptions, and we'll talk about those later. Now, because breeding takes an average, you can't get a pal with a lower breeding rank than the parents that you're breeding with, but that's why you want to aim for these lower pals, and then you can kind of build out your chains from there. There's also unique combinations for certain pals, and these are going to be the hybrid and subspecies pals that can only be obtained with certain combos. So to get a Memorist Crist, you need Memorist and Wumpo, and that's it. You also can't breed legendary pals unless you're breeding with the same species. So you can't do something like Blazemut and then another pal to get Frostallion. It's only Frostallion and Frostallion. Frostallion Noct is kind of like its own exclusivity, but again, that's going to be a specific breeding pair. And you need a Frostallion to get to it. Same goes for Jet Dragon, Palladius, Necromus, and Jormantide Ignis. Also, you can see that Blazemut has the highest breeding rank, so you can't breed yourself into that you're going to have to obtain it through the game and that's why mr spreadsheet is your new friend you need to look up the breeding power of pals that way you can start to think about how you can chain breed into some of the pals or access pals that you're looking for so yeah you can actually get shadow beak early with a kit sun and astagon well i don't have the astagon i have kit sun which is nice but how, how do i do that well then you just keep on looking for it so suzaku and pyron knocked interesting but then suzaku relaxorus yeah you can get astagon with that again before level 20 if you find a huge fire egg in the desert and then you just catch a relaxorus well that's going to breed you into an astagon which brings us to the next part of this breeding guide not only is breeding insane for getting you access to powerful pals early on but also you want to use it to have a higher chance to breed down passive skills, and then you get like a four max passive skill pal that has insane stats, and that's where the hyper in-game goes. 
but lucky pals have 15% attack and 15% work speed. So if you want those on a pal, gonna have to find a lucky breeding chain. Also, there's all kinds of weird stuff. So Astagon and Fenglope's gonna give us an Anubis, but what if I breed Astagon with a legendary pal? Because you can do that. So the legend trait also has just like crazy stats, 20% attack, 20% defense. You can theoretically put this into any pal. When messing around, I ended up with a beacon that has Jet Dragons, Divine Dragon, and Legend. So that can do some pretty crazy breeding stuff. And that also brings us back to the spreadsheet. Told you, this is daddy. So there's a tab with all combos that you can use to reverse engineer some of the breeding chains. So we can scroll through and see the results that we might get from certain pal breeding. Also, that means we can pull up Astagon again, and then we can search by parent. So let's find the beacon, which is viable. And then, yeah, you have to breed it with a legendary, but that helps us out. So beacon, jet dragon gives us Astagon. Now our beacon is female, but fortunately our Necromus is male. So we're going to be doing this with beacon Necromus. And then we're just going to try to get a legend Astagon. And then we can breed that Astagon with Fanglope as long as the Astagon is female. See you guys in a long time. Now because breeding takes a long time, we can start working on getting another Anubis because it's all about chain breeding down into. So one we're taking care of for legendary and rare, but we also want Musclehead and Ferocious. Now if you don't have rare, you can still go for Hooligan if you just want a raw damage Anubis. Also here are some of the other ones if you want like the Vanguard and Stronghold Strategist to make your character stronger. Speed, Legendary Runner, Swift Nimble, and then Work Speed, there you go. So those aren't like all the passives and we'll talk about the passives later. Those are kind of the ones that you want to aim for or build around primarily, depending on the pal that you're going for. Okay, so we have a Ferocious Female Serpent Terra and a Musclehead Cryolynx. This is going to get fun. All right, breeding that with Incineram or Incineram Noct is going to give us Anubis and then Cryolynx. Hey, that works, and we got some good ones. Easy. Actually, for this case, I don't want Musclehead on my Anubis because that's going to impact its work on the base since this is going to be a mining Anubis, so maybe for transport or handiwork, I don't want that to get hit. So we do have a Ferocious Brave breeding pair right here, and if I want Hooligan, I can, but... It's only a 5% attack difference compared to Brave. So that, like, if you want to do the longer breeding chain for the 5% optimization because the end game ends up in that min-max for any kind of game, sure. But as for me right now, I'm just going to breed this Chillet and the Elizabeth to get the Anubis, and that should help complete the chain. Let's find an open breeding area. There we go. Large dragon egg. So now we are in deep. I let this run while I was editing videos. So hopefully we have a female legendary Astagon in any of these. And then it comes to hatching the eggs. So in the settings, you can change it to where huge eggs don't take any time to hatch. and You can instantly incubate them. The default is going to be two hours. And for something like the dragon egg, it's going to take a lot of comfort. So it's going to say like, oh, the egg is cold. The egg is warm and then you're going to have to add chillers or fireplaces to then make it hot or cold enough to get an optimal hatching time. And male. Great. All right, what happens when Fanglope breeds with legendaries? That way we can just skip a step, kind of, or at least move a step around, so we can have a lucky legendary Alpha Dran, Pain King, Alpha Dran, and Alpha Dran. Okay, now the question is, Anubis, can we get to that from an Alpha Dram? We can with Incineworm and Vanworm Crist, which is kind of ugly. What if we have Pain King involved? Vanworm Crist and Bushi. Okay. Okay, interesting. So we also have Sadist. Now, Sadist isn't great on a combat pal, even though it gives plus 15 attack, because minus 15 defense. If it's getting one shot, doesn't matter, but... For a working mining Anubis, actually better. So we want like Legend, Lucky, Sadist, and then Ferocious. So I can breed the Frostallion with the Fanglope until we get Legend, Lucky, Sadist, and then like try to breed an Anubis that has Ferocious and we'll end up there or something. Also, if you want to farm for good passives on certain pals, depending on the pal trader or black marketeer that you have, you can just pull them out of the box and bring them back in, check, and see what they have. 
This can save you some time in the long run with getting certain pals and their passives. Now, if you're confused, despite this being a guide, that's just the complexity of breeding. It's also something you need to play around with to get a feel for. And I think I'm going to have to call it here for the video because the thing about breeding is that's an all day to multi day process, which is similar to Pokemon. It's RNG, but it leads to having the best, most insane pals that are magnitude stronger than just the base pals that you can get. And then there's extra RNG of like male, female breeding compatibility and stuff like that. So we have Ferocious here, breeding that with the Sadist Legend. That way we can get like a Ferocious Legend something to breed into another Anubis to then breed with whatever's coming out of this Fanglope and Frostallion. And eventually we get there. Eventually you just have so many passive skills floating around and then it funnels into the pal you're looking for and you're good. Having multiple chain breeding operations running at once will speed this up. Cake doesn't seem to be a problem at this time, especially because like if it's all passive, you know, while you're waiting for eggs to be made, for eggs to hatch, you go out, you go and like farm some dungeons and get some money by killing things buy some extra eggs, buy some extra milk, speed up the process even more, come back to all your cakes. And it also gets a little better because after your first super insane breeding chain, then like, yeah, now I'm going to have a legendary lucky or multiple legendary lucky species floating around that I can then use to breed into anything else and get the other pals that I'm looking for. So it's like a very large initial upfront investment, but then it gets crazy and then you become God. And I almost forgot about the passive skills because this is just like over a week's worth of work and hours of recording to bring it all together. So the wiki has a list of all the passive skills. Optimization, min-max, meta building isn't there just yet. There are some decisions you can make that are preference where it's like, oh yeah, do I want the sadist for like the crazy attack low defense? Again, not good if your pal just gets like dabbed on by something, but there could be some uses here where like, oh, Sadist on a Daydream or a Dazzy, it doesn't matter if you're using the passive ones for those stats. There's a couple of different ways to get different kind of stats, and that's why you can just sort it through here. So looking through all the different attacks to kind of figure out how you want to build your pal. I do believe if you're going for like a mono type of a pal, there's going to be better ones as well. So for certain offensive pals, the Divine Dragon is going to be more damage than the Lucky, since that's only 15% attack. It also kind of like factors in how the damage calculation works, but I'm pretty sure that when you have the overall stat being added last for like the typing, it's just going to be more damage on top of more damage. So that means Musclehead, Sirius, Legend, plus one of the uh, extra 20% damage ones is going to be more just offensive pal damage than having the lucky. Also, I think this list is missing a few because it doesn't have Palladius, Necromus, or Anubis's ones, but those are just their respective typings into damage, so yeah. And maybe you want to give up 10-15% attack so you have Burly Body and then get that 20% defense so your pal is around longer getting more rotations of attack and doing more damage overall. So, lot to consider here but fun to play around with and fun to breed into. And then you got a lot going on. So if you guys enjoy the video, hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.